Mm -hmm. to order Wednesday, May 24th. Time is 6.01. If we can uh, stand for the prayer and pledge, just to Father, the Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord, we are gathered here today to do good work. Bless this council. Bless this parish. Bless the country we live in. Protect our troops here and abroad and all those who serve in the military. And, and remember our veterans on this coming Monday, Memorial Day. We pray in your name. Amen. 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 Mr. Tommy Lane, you can leave us in the place. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Here. 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 <laughs> Go to land. I give up one. <laughs> I'm Roll living me. the two names now. Y'all look alike. Roll call. At <laughs> <laughs> least let the TV be Motion on. carries. Uh, first, we'll go to comments from the general public on non-agenda items. First, we have Mr. Michael Barra to provide an update on the Crime Stoppers program from in Iberia Parish. Mr. Barra. I assume I just hit this to get it on. There we go. Uh, my name is Mike Barra. I'd like to introduce two of our board members, Mr. Al Babadon, Mr. Wynn Murphy. Iberia Crime Stoppers officially got their start <coughs> May the 1st of this year. We've been working on it since December. Uh, we're a nonprofit organization and we offer awards up to $1,000. Uh, sorry, it doesn't move. It doesn't change. <coughs> No, it is the computer. Mm -hmm. All right, now we're in business. Huh? Again, we're a, a nonprofit uh, uh, program, and we offer anonymous, anonymous is the big word that we're trying to get across, cash rewards up to $1,000 for information leading to an arrest of a known criminal. We're governed by a civilian 
board of uh, directors. And we do not take any government sub subsidies whatsoever. Uh, we're based on the concept that somebody besides the criminal knows exactly what is going on. So on that basis, somebody calls into our tips line and we'll go into that. We are tax deductible, we're a 501c3. We take donations from everybody, gifts, grants, and we run our media by KLAF, KDN, the Daily Iberian, uh, KNE Radio, plus social media. We're in everything that we can get into. On our Facebook page, we started Wednesday, a week ago today, uh, Wednesday afternoon, and we're over <coughs> 3,000 who have joined the Crime Stoppers efforts. Uh, what we did was we looked at what the criminal activity was in Iberia Parish. We we're for the parish, not just the city of you know, Iberia. Went to the Supreme Court and got their statistics. The cases filed in 2000 and 14 is 7,506. The cases filed in 15 was 8,762. And I thought it would be a 16% increase. They just filed yesterday the, uh, the updated for 16, and that's 11,517 court cases. That's a 23.9% increase, big increase. Mm -hmm. Louisiana is ranked 50th in crime and corrections, and we're ranked <coughs> 46th in education. The crime and corrections has a lot to do with the education. We need to educate our younger people so that they grow up to be productive citizens of whatever parish or whatever state they choose to live in. We have, <coughs> we have this. Calls per hour for the Iberia Sheriff's Office, and this is a, a four-month average. So the actual average of uh, the actual numbers on 2017 is actual, but we broke it up for a year and to get the first four months of uh, 2016. The average call was 6.2 calls per hour. Went up to 7.2 calls per hour. That's a 14% increase. Shots being fired, 93 in the first four months of last year, 303 in the first four months of this year. A 5.6% increase in aggravated uh, battery shootings. That means that somebody was actually hit with a bullet. The it's uh, 18 was in 16, uh, 2016. And so far this year, we have 17 that were hit with bullets. Homicides, a total of eight homicides in Iberia Parish was eight last year. So that's 2.7, and we're at two points right now. That's a 25% decrease, but that's not a stable number. Residential burglaries, in the first year, or the 2016, there were 666 residential burglaries. 222 for the first four months of last year. We're already at 181. Now, what does that say? Uh, 181, they're down 18.5%. Uh, is neighborhood watches what working? I think it is. Uh, vehicle burglaries, 199 in the first four months of last year, 176. Are we getting out to the people? Lock your car at night because that's where most of the burglaries take place at night with unlocked cars. They're not breaking the windows to get in, they're just opening a door and taking out whatever the contents are. In, in working with uh, tipsters, uh, this is what they say, snitches get stitches. <coughs> uh, they're afraid. <laughs> so what do we do? We need knowledgeable people who know of criminal activities to call us. They don't report the crime because of the fear. When we receive a tip, we receive it from an untraceable number. We cannot see the number. We don't want to find the number. We don't care who you are 
or where you are. All we want is that information. The second biggest problem we have is apathy. That's when people say, it doesn't affect me, I'm not involved, I'm keeping my hands clean. That's wrong for you and it's wrong for the parish. It does affect you, it affects you economically. When some business is trying to move into Iberia Parish, what do they look for? They look for criminal activity, they look for education, they're looking at all the aspects of what makes a parish successful. That ain't one of them. So, we have it as anonymous, anonymity. No one knows who's gonna make that call, not even Crime Stoppers. We'll never know who makes that call. And that's what we have to get out to our people. All calls are live. There's no recordings. The caller gives the information. I know that uh, Warren Gosherson committed the crime. He was there, I saw him. And uh, he's six foot two, drives a Buick. And uh, that's the information we want. Uh, we give that caller a code. It might be 617. Don't forget that code, Mr. Caller, or Ms. Caller. And we'll tell them to call back. We meet, the board meets every second Wednesday of the month. And the rewards are voted on by that time. And on Thursday, the caller should call back and let you know that uh, he still wants his reward and what is it and how can he get it. Uh, the caller is going to be called, uh, told where to pick up his or her reward. Telephone number is very easy, 364-TIPS-8477. Calls are answered 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The information is given, is given to our coordinator, who then passes it on to the investigative division of the sheriff's office, or uh, Chief Matthews and General Ed, if it involves him. Both agencies will get that. And uh, IPSO acts on that information, as well as General Ed. So, how does it work? If the information proves to be accurate, Iberia Crime Stoppers tells the tips that are called back. The board approves the award, and we hand it off to him very secretly. The rewards are up to $1,000. Now, it's based on the severity of the offense. In other words, rape, armed robbery, kidnapping, murder, <coughs> would be one set of numbers that we would use. Jaywalking, uh, parking in a handicap zone, uh, it's all illegal, but you know, it's not anything that uh, we would worry about. We're also starting uh, this fall Campus Crime Stoppers. We've gotten together with uh, Superintendent uh, of Iberry Parish, uh, Dale Henderson. We've gotten together with uh, Ray uh, Simon at Catholic High, and we're trying to get the rest of the high schools and middle schools in on-campus crime. How many times have you heard of somebody bringing, well, we just heard a young boy in first grade bringing a gun to school, falls out of his backpack, friend picks it up, and another kid is shot. If somebody knows that there's something illegal on the campus, they will have people to call and it'll be an automatic $100 reward. They don't have to tell anybody but uh, the person in charge. So, how do we get the word out? We get it out through television with KLAF, NBC, and Lafayette, and KDN, Fox 15. Newspaper, The Daily Iberian, and KANE. And uh, you might have missed it, but we had uh, the crime of the week this week was at 5 o'clock on KLAF, and there was a shooting and murder of Mrs. Hill. And we're trying to get information on that right now. But we're also using Facebook. I told you that we started it a week ago Wednesday, and uh, <coughs> pretty close to 4,000 uh, people that have joined in. Our email is Iberia Crime Stopper, no S, because there's too many letters. Uh, our website is IberiaCrimeStoppers.com, and we have banners, posters, magnetic cards to go in your refrigerator to remind <coughs> people the number and how they call and again to emphasize that it is all anonymous. We do not know. Um, if there are questions that we can answer, we'll be happy to do that. 
Anybody have any questions for Mr. Barrow? Yes, Mr. Lander? Have, have, have y'all had a good response from the businesses in the community and has that resource been tapped? That resource has not <coughs> been fully tapped. We are trying to tap that resource now. We have had success that we can tell businesses. Uh, in, in business robberies alone, um, last year there were 136 uh, business burglaries. <coughs> and uh, as of uh, the, four first, the first four months of this year, it's already at 79. So it's going to be catching up and surpassing last year. Our next crime of the week is going to be uh, on uh, St. Peter Street near uh, Roses and Eckerd's in that area where the businesses have been broken into. <coughs> and all we need from our council and for our general public is to get the word out. And the word is that it is anonymous. We never, ever know who's going to call. And <coughs> We want you, of course, to donate to Iberia Prime Stoppers. We are, as I said earlier, tax deductible 501c3. And this is our address, Post Office Box 11235. And we're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days out of the year, <coughs> including Christmas. Mr. Brown, you have a question? Mike, uh, uh, it's clear that uh, just calling in you won't get a warrant. That, I mean, call in and you won't. You, you know, in, if you just call in and nothing happens, that uh, they, they don't need to be looking for a warrant, right? Uh, if you call in, normally you're calling in with with something, right? Uh, that uh, you know of, uh, and it could be immediate. Uh, they could see drugs being sold on the corner of. Hopkins and Lombard, right. and they could call the police directly first because that would be the most important thing to do. But they would also be eligible for a tips a reward on that. We don't send anybody, we don't know who they are, so we can't send a police unit to say, hey, did you call? No, we don't know that. Uh, that person could be in New York and remembering a crime and calling in to 337-364-8477. Uh, anything that is, is in the past uh, is what we're looking for. We have, I think, eight unsolved murders uh, in Iberia Parish uh, so far. Uh, we did the first one on Mr. Dugard. Uh, uh, and the second one was another murder I, I cannot recall offhand. But right now we're trying to get as current as possible. That first murder took place in uh, 2015. There's still somebody out there that knows no. something. I think you made a very, very valid point is that it doesn't have to be uh, tips that are just on your crimes of the week, that it's any criminal activity any that's, criminal that's activity. going on. We're just refreshing somebody's memory on a current or a past, but if they know of anything, any activity that's been going on in the past, uh, crackheads, uh, uh, selling crack at schools. Uh, Dotson Street had a, a crack house that was one block away from the school. Somebody knew about it, we should have been told about it. That would have been a reward. But as it was, it was broken up by the Iberia Parish Sheriff's Office. Any other questions for Mr. Barrow? Thank you very much for coming, Thank Mr. Barrow. Thank you for all your efforts and your board's efforts on uh, developing this program and uh, 364 tips if you know anything and don't forget to call in it's anonymous thank you mr. Thank you. appreciate thank you. it thank you we'll move on to uh, <coughs> comments from the general public on agenda items uh, if there's any comments from the general public on agenda items uh, you had to fill out a comment cord I don't believe we received any comment cards as of yet um, and that would be for uh, general items as well as uh, comments from the general public on adoption of the millages uh, so uh, not having any cards i would entertain a motion to close public comment 
Moved by Mr. Gosselin, second by Mr. Tommy Landry. Roll call. <coughs> that motion carries. Moving on to the reports, finance and administrative action. Hopefully this is the last night I have to read. There were provided in our packets. Reports from the parish or other governmental agencies, the reports by the project engineers on various ongoing projects, including grant funded projects, all in accordance with resolution number 2013-49, as well as uh, the update on the LGAP grant funding received for renovations for the council chambers in the voting system. I think the reports from the project en engineers were provided in your packet. Uh, as far as the update on uh, the grant for the council chambers, uh, we should have the new voting system installed within the next two months, I believe. Uh, and we're uh, evaluating uh, prices to update the audio equipment as well because we'll have some funding left over uh, from that grant after we update the voting system. So I'm looking forward to having the new voting system and uh, the ease of, of the public for being able to track those votes uh, soon. Public Works Department, the report for the closed work orders dated May 1st through the 5th and 8th through the 12th, 2017. Those were also provided in our packets. Special business none. Any council member announcements? Parish president announcements. Parish President announcements. Uh, last Monday, <clears throat> I met with Congressman Clay Higgins and others, Port Director, uh, the Colonel from the um, uh, Coast Guards and others, at the Port Office to discuss dredging, dredging, uh, dredging and widening of the Acadiana Gulf of Mexico access channel to large for larger barges to, um, to be able to travel there. An update on the Robert B. Green building. Bids were received uh, for the trees to be removed and will be awarded in the next seven to 10 days. Uh, the architect contract is actually being finalized right now, so we're moving forward on the Robert B. Green building. <clears throat> we met today with Bay Rods and Habits and Associates and also Fence the Maker to discuss a public meeting to be held for the roundabout at 3212 and the Acadiana Regional Airport Access Road, so we're moving forward on that. Uh, just I wanna, for your information, I wanna take a little time to update you on um, what the administration has been working on for the past several months pertaining to drainage in Iberia Parish. Uh, as you are aware, uh, drainage is, very com is a very complex issue pertaining not only to Iberia Parish, but much of Louisiana. It has become obvious in the recent past that this is uh, especially true in our region. Therefore, we are continuing to work uh, on this issue with leaders of the entire region. Uh, while that collaborative effort is ongoing, each parish must work on individual projects <clears throat> continuously. For instance, St. Martin Parish has uh, dedicated funds of $26.5 million for drainage alone, and will soon begin working on substantial projects to improve their drainage system. In an effort to keep pace and to put Iberia Parish drainage system in a position to function, not only as Iberia Parish, not only as an Iberia Parish system, or system, but as a system that will be able to manage the water coming into Iberia Parish. As promised, we have engaged with engineering firms to advise us on the most appropriate action within specific channels, which will give us guidance for the work, for the work which we must do to accomplish an effective drainage system in Iberia Parish. As of now, we are working with Finstermaker. We have 11 projects that we have identified that need to be addressed. <clears throat> to uh, help better our drainage system. Four of the projects are to be outsourced to contractors. Delahousa Canal South, uh, the Blanc Coulee, Nars Road Canal, Park Purdue A and Park Purdue B. Park Purdue B. Totaling 16.6 miles. And I want to give you an idea of what we're facing financially. The engineering calls for the following items. Topographical surveying, uh, graphical surveying for the uh, for modeling, and hydraulic modeling, engineering basic design service, construction inspection, permitting, management and surveying reports on two channels totaling 9.32 miles will cost the parish just the engineering costs 160 thousand dollars, 160 thousand seven hundred dollars. Engineering costs. Um, 
<coughs> typically reflect around 10% of the total project cost. Therefore, we're estimating the construction costs associated with these two projects to cost of area parish roughly $1.7 million. When you add the engineering costs to it, you, you're very close to $2 million. We currently have $4.1 million in our drainage fund. As you can see, two more similar projects would deplete our drainage fund. Uh, <clears throat> that's the reason for me not requesting to do everything at once. So for the record, don't believe we have so much money in our drainage fund that we don't need anymore. Uh, <clears throat> the other seven projects that I mentioned uh, will be completed by Public Works in-house. So we're moving forward on that. Also at our next meeting, I have the uh, <clears throat> Dr. Aziz coming in to give you guys an update on the uh, road project listing that you gave me money to, uh, to work on that last year. So that's gonna take place on June 14th. June 14th, that's your next meeting. That's my update. Thank you, Mr. Reshord. Moving to consent agenda items for public hearing and adoption. We only have the approval of the minutes of March 22nd, 2017 <coughs> and April 12th, 2017 under the consent agenda items. Is there anybody who wants to remove any of those uh, from the consent agenda <coughs> items? If not, I need a motion Move. to approve. Moved by Mr. Brown, Sorry. second by Mr. Pollard. Roll call. <coughs> that motion carries. Ordinances introduced for public hearing and adoption uh, to be voted on at tonight's meeting, <coughs> Senate number 4827, <coughs> introduced by Paul Landry, District 7, an ordinance setting forth and establishing a property millage for General Parish, uh, formerly known as the General Alimony, which is levied on all taxable property in the rural areas of the parish only at the adjusted rate of 4.03 mills for 2017. I Do move. I have a motion? Move. Second. Moved by Mr. Landry, second by Mr. Gonsalin. Mr. Landry for discussion. I guess a couple of y'all noticed that we have some of these that are here, uh, 40, 4827 and then 4828 will be basically <clears throat> the same. What has to happen is uh, because if we look to go to the 4.12, we have to vote on the 4.03, which was the mills from last year. It takes eight votes, and then, because it's the adjusted rate. And then the next summary, if we decide to go up to the 4.12 to roll it forward, that's the one that takes uh, 10 votes. Now, if you look on that, guys, between 4.03 and 4.12 on the paper I gave y'all, it's only an additional 40,151. That's the account where we're looking to get down to only $5,000. That's the one where y'all pay the little extra things here and there when we get in a bind and stuff. So um, that's going to end up being the, the reason we're going to have multiple ones on here where you got it twice. When we get to the library, I don't think it's here twice and the bond payment and stuff. So in case you were confused, that's kind of a, a reason why we were doing that. <coughs> Any other discussion? All right, roll call. Motion carries. Summary number 4828 introduced by Paul Landry, an ordinance setting forth and establishing the property millage for General Parish, formerly known as General Alimony which is levied on all taxable property in the rural areas of the parish only at the adjusted rate of 4.03 mills and authorizing an increase of said rate to 4.12 mills to be levied for 2017. Roll forward, it takes 10 votes to have a motion. Move. Moved by Mr. Tommy Landry. Second. Second by Mr. Eugene Olivier. Any discussion? Roll call. <coughs> Motion failed. <laughs> Senate Bill 
Next, we have summary number 4829, introduced by Paul Landry, District 7, an ordinance setting forth and establishing a property millage for the exempted municipalities, formerly known as the criminal tax, which is levied on all taxable properties in the municipalities only at the adjusted rate of 2.01 mills for 2017. Do I have a motion? Move. Moved by Mr. Tommy Landry. Second. Seconded by Mr. Paul Landry. Any discussion? Roll call. That motion carries. Summary number 4830, introduced by Paul Landry, District 7, an ordinance setting forth and establishing the property millage for the exempted municipalities, formerly known as the criminal tax, which is levied on all pro taxable property in the municipalities only at the adjusted rate of 2.01 mills and authorizing an increase of said rate to 2.06 mills to be levied for 2017. Do I have a motion? Move. Move by Mr. Tommy Landry, seconded by Mr. Paul Landry. Any discussion? Wait, this, this is the first one? The second one? Is, second one. Second one. This is the increase for going forward? Yes, sir. I have a question. Um, Mr. Gosherson? Mr. Landry, you're, you're going to reduce the sink in front of the library, correct? From 0.20 to 1.5? 2.0 to 1.5, correct? 0.25 to 0.20. That was okay. the recommend. So that's going to be 0.5. So yes. this 0.5 would go to this the adjusted row forward? Correct? Right. At, at uh, yeah, 2.06. And it would only give you a, a $9,000 increase. Okay, so just for the record, I'm going to vote for this one. Because I plan to vote <coughs> to stay at 2612 millage neutral, and I'm voting because we're going to take from the sinking fund to put towards here in the um, the property millage. So I'll vote. I'm just saying for the record. Thank you. Any other discussion, Mr. Brown? For the uh, for the library, the Does reason why it's reduced is because of the, uh, the payment that's over. Collected night. Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. Correct. No. Any further discussion? Roll call. That motion carries. Summary number 4831, an ordinance setting forth and establishing a property millage for the courthouse and jail maintenance, which is levied on all taxable property in the municipalities only at the adjusted rate of 0.76 for 2017. 16. Yes, Move. Move by Mr. Paul Landry, seconded by Mr. Tommy Landry. Any discussion? Roll call. <clears throat> motion carries summary number 4832 introduced by mr paul landry district 7 an ordinance setting forth and establishing the property millage for the courthouse and jail maintenance which is levied on all taxable property in the munis municipalities only at the adjusted rate of 0.76 mills and authorizing an increase of said rate to 0 0.80 mills to be levied for 2017. Do I have a motion? Move. Move. Moved by Mr. Olivier, seconded by Mr. Paul Landry. Any discussion? Roll call. Motion fails. Summary number 4833, an ordinance setting forth and establishing a property millage for the public library system, which is levied on all taxable property in the parish at a rate of 3.5 mills for 2017. Do I have a motion? Move. Moved Second. by Mr. Brown. Seconded by Mr. Michael Landry. Yes. Any discussion? Roll call.
That motion carries. Summary number 4834, introduced by Paul Landry, District 7, an ordinance setting forth and establishing a property millage for the public building maintenance, which is levied on all taxable property in the parish at the adjusted rate of 4.64 mills for 2017. Do I have a motion? Move. Moved by Mr. Tommy Landry, seconded, seconded. by Mr. Eugene Olivier. Any discussion? Roll call. Which number you just said? 4834. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> Motion carries. Did she record? <laughs> you want to change your vote, Mr. Yes, Francis? Yes, I sure did. Thank you. Motion carries. Summary number 4835, introduced by Paul Landry, an ordinance setting forth and establishing the property millage for the public building maintenance. Uh, which is levied on all taxable property in the parish at the adjusted rate of 4.64 mills and authorizing an increase of said rate to 4.76 mills to be levied for 2017. Do you have a motion? Move. Moved by Mr. Brown. Second. Second by Mr. Olivier. Any discussions? No, just brief. Mr. Goshasam. Madam Chair, may I refer to Kimberly Segura and ask her what is the current balance in the account for that budget, for that account? Public savings? Current. I believe it's about, I, I'm not 100% certain on it, but I believe it's about $4 million. $4 million. Okay. Thank you. Got it. Mr. Gosling? Yeah, just um, looking at some of these millages and increases that are being suggested, just, just want to remind the council that, you know, there's, there's three parts to millages, and the first one is the budget, which the administration provides to us that we vote on. And the second is the net ta tax digest, which the assessor provides as an assessment, which went up last year. And then there's the millage that we're discussing tonight to go up or down. So, so just because there's not a millage increase, there's other opportunities that, that we can maneuver to uh, dictate governmental spending. And, and I don't think the increase is one of them, is what my opinion. But you know, as a council member, I do recognize that we need to provide essential needs of this parish through government spending, but also recognize that this parish and these constituents have less in their pockets and we ask them to pay more. And this is not the time that we need to be asking them to pay more right now. And uh, that's why I'm gonna be consistent in not increasing our taxes tonight. Mr. Landry? Yeah, well, Ricky, in, in contrast to that, I would also uh, like to inform the public that if some of these millages, if we don't get to the right number, we're gonna end up having to reduce services in, in, in all likelihood, you know, close some facilities, shut them down. And I just want the public to be aware. Also, from a drainage standpoint, I think that, uh, you know, what Larry just told us about the needs of the drainage in the parish, and also the fact that we have a number of bridges in this parish, a, a large number, that within the next two to three years are gonna be closed. And I just want all y'all to remember that, that those, those are the important things that need to be considered when we talking about our tax dollars you know the people behind us here and in front of us they drove here tonight on a road you know those roads need to be repaired we got agricultural interests you know when bridges are closed it impacts them severely so just a, a thought that you know we don't want to increase taxes but we'd like to be revenue neutral but there are needs that you know need to be met and when when though when the when the funds are not there then the services are going to be impacted Mr. Paul Landry. Uh, and, and, and Ricky, you know, if we go back and look, you know, we can see where we had 35, 31 yep. mills a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And if you actually go and look on the website with the 64 parishes, we're at about, once again, seven or eight from the bottom. Uh, I know. I pay a lot, I got property, I pay a lot of taxes, so I'm taxing myself, you know? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, we have to 
we have to cover our costs for this. You know, uh, I'm not running for office. I don't have an agenda, you know, against Larry or nothing. Uh, we need to give him the money that we need. When we're going to get that, that building program in, I mean, we might use up two million instantly, just like the drainage, we're going to chop away two million. I mean, I think it's just a disservice. That's just my opinion. And I know it is hard times, but a lot of people, their houses are going to fall under the homestead exemption. You might be talking $10 increase. You know, we had an opportunity here, you know, 300 and something thousand off of, uh, off of that. I, I, I just, I think it's personalities taking control of what's best for the citizens, but that's just my opinion. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Landry, I, I understood your selling point, what you just said, but in economics, raising taxes doesn't get you out of the burden you're in. Uh, bringing businesses here to locate here and establish and set house brings families because it creates jobs and families pay taxes and that defines your tax base, not continuing to tax your way out. So you're right. We need to have the parish president, have the people who sell this parish go out and sell it for what it is. Not to come here and say, well, you know, the roads are falling apart, government's growing, and now we need to say at the end of the day, well, we ran out of money. Well, just like everybody else in here, when they run out of money, guess what? They all make cuts. Okay, I'm not saying to cut services, but I'm saying at the end of the day, there are some ways and some gaps in the budget, just like Ricky said. That's why there's a budget process every year. That's why in mid-years we can come back and actually execute some things that we did in, in, at the budget process. Yes, Mr. Landry, you're right. Those gas stations do need to get here. And it does take money to get here, but it also takes an engine that everybody takes to get there, too. And that's jobs. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Just like we did a week ago, we created jobs by money in the tip district. Okay? So we need to get back to selling the parish. You know, we always say, well, you know, Lafayette this, Bruce or that. But you can't go to Lafayette and have the natural resources that Iberia Parish has. The salt mines, the Tabasco, those type of things need to be sold. We put money in the advertisement. And I'm not saying Mr. Richard's not doing it. I'm saying, well, but I'm that's where we need to work harder. We need to get out there and say, listen, Iberia Parish is open for business. And you're right. We are one of the lowest tax breaks or taxing parishes around. So there's our selling point. We just started. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Brown. No, but I'm not going to get Mr. it. Mr. Tommy Landry. No, I'm not, I'd like to kind of update Warren. We, we, we used to have 5,000 people working at the Port of Library. We, have, we maybe have 1,000, okay? So our resources are down overall. I understand that. But we, the, the, the less that we do, the less people are going to want to come here. The more you tax, the more they leave. Well, and, and you're talking about a $7 on, on a $150,000 home, okay? <laughs> Mr. Landry, take a drive down Trotter Street and see how many foreclosures there are. I, I, I grew up in that neighborhood. I'm very much aware of how many foreclosures there are, and it's directly related to the economy. I, I don't gas. disagree. Okay. So, but anyway, just one point time, uh, yes, Mr. Please. Landry at the floor. I'm Paul gonna, Landry. Uh, so we're going to take all these people <laughs> that are coming here with their business and show them our pretty cane fields and explain to them that we don't have sewage and water and watch them run right back into St. Martinville. It takes money to do things, Warren. You know that. And, and I'll even quote one of my good friends that said, we have a revenue as well as spending problems. And I told you when you told me that, we'll work on both of them. Let's get the revenue up a little bit and we're gonna go through the budget and we'll cut wherever we can. I've went through the general budget twice, guys. There is nowhere to cut. We are in the bone. That 40000 meant a lot to y'all. But as, as it go, we're going to go with this. Okay? The next but thing but when cut. things are going to happen, when things are going to happen, and, you know, then it's, then it's going to be too late. Okay? Mr. Gosselin? No, I just want to remind the council, if we look back at 2016, we went up on five millage rates last year out of the nine, and we stayed revenue neutral. So this would be the second year that we requested an increase especially when the assessor went up on our assessed value last year as well. So we, we're not, Paul, we're not saying that we're not trying to increase revenue. We did it last year by staying revenue neutral. We increased our tax re our revenues. And now we're asking to do it again. I think that, you know, we need to take, take a step back and just take a deep breath and say, hey, these people are hurting out here. Let's take a breath and, and give them a break for a minute. Mr. Reshore. 
Mr. Dugas? <coughs> yeah, I, I've listened to all these arguments tonight and everybody has a valid point, but as a taxpayer myself, <coughs> one of the most important things to do is I don't mind paying taxes. I don't mind paying more tax. The problem is trust. The people that don't want to pay the tax are not trusting that we're going to do what we I say we're going to do with the money. And, and, and we have to gain that trust back before we can start moving forward. They got to trust us with their money. I agree with and, you. And, and we got to work with that. I totally agree with you. Mr. Gosh, I, I just want to have a closing point to this, and I, you know, if the millages go, it's going. You know, I, I don't disagree with you, Paul. I, I don't mind paying more, but I want to plan for the additional spending that we're going to take in. And that's the problem that we have is a plan. What what kind of plan do you want, Mr. Warren? Mr. Richard, the plan that you gave us tonight, the, the drainage plan, yeah. it came tonight, the night of the millages. Why? Because we're discussing the millages tonight. Uh, and again, I'm not, I'm not, not going to get into throwing okay. debate with you, Mr. Richard. I'm just saying at the end of the I day, Mr. I, I don't disagree with you, Mr. Landry. I don't mind paying a dollar more. But I want a plan at the end of the day. I, and he did give a plan tonight. No, he sir, I did, did not give a plan tonight. I, I did Thank not you. give a plan tonight. What I did is I told you where we're at so far. When the plans come, you're going to get the plan. We do not, this is definitely by no stretch of imagination a plan for drainage. I'm just telling you. This is where public buildings and maintenance. Update. Well, I didn't give you a plan for public buildings either. We did give you money for uh, a study, and we're still awaiting that study. Not for public study. buildings, you didn't. For public buildings, you gave me money to do work, but that's, I didn't give you a plan for it is what I'm no, saying. No, sir, we it. gave you money to go and study you, you the buildings. You gave much, oh. but I, I don't have a, I didn't give you a plan tonight for it is what I'm saying. My point being, Mr. Richard. You're right. We yeah. actually have the, the, the person that we hired is actually going <coughs> through the buildings right now. So do we'll you think you can make it through 2017 on what the money that you do have in the budget? I think so. Without raising? I think so. Okay. Because what we're doing, Warren, and I actually told them, I told Paul that yesterday or whenever, but we will need money to complete what we need to complete in Iberia Parish. So I'm telling you, don't think that we have the necessary money we need to get everything accomplished that we're going to try to accomplish. I know we do not have a lot of money at the end of the day, mm -hmm. but I do know at the end of the day this will help somebody out there, even if it's $10 in their pocket. That $10 will go back into the local economy and it will make its way through, through, through the tax base. That's what it's developed to do. Thank you. Any further discussion? Badly. Mr. Olivier? Yeah, I totally agree with Paul and, uh, and Tommy. I mean, we need to gradually move these millages uh, a tad. I mean, what, co what it cost us 10 years ago to do a project, almost double today to do that same project. We gotta have the money in place to do these projects. I mean, if, if, you, want the, if you want businesses to come to Iberia your Parish, we gotta have the infrastructure in place for them to come here and do business with us. This is why we're losing business. This is why our parish is not growing. This is why we're losing tax revenue. We don't have nothing to offer anybody to come here. You Can know, I this is a chance for us to actually start doing a little extra for the parish. And I think we ought to approve these uh, increases. No. And, and it's not much. It's not a hard hit to every household. Maybe nine, ten bucks a year we are looking at. Thank Mr. Reshore. Natalie, I think when um, <clears throat> next week or the next meeting, uh, when you're going to get your report on your roads, you're going to find that we have roughly $38 million worth of roads that need to be repaired. You're going to find that we currently have in our maintenance program around $400,000 annually. We need around $1.7 million to maintain the roads that we have. We don't have a dedicated fund for roads. We all know that, right? We have no dedicated funds for roads. For the most part, we have no fund for, for, for water. We have no fund for the most part for, for sewer. But we're constantly talking about trying to bring more businesses here, more rooftops here. If you have a business that decides they want to build somewhere along Highway 90, and they can build in Iberia Paris, let's just use Highway, let's say between Highway 88 and Delmore. Someone decided they want to build a $500,000 building. And they build it there. They bought their property. They paid $100,000 for it. Well, when they get there, they have no water. Well, actually, let me rephrase that. I just ran a water line there, but I want to <laughs> use it what it was six months ago. There's no water. But if they would have went right up the street to St. Martin Parish and bought a piece of property and paid $125,000 instead of $100,000, they would have had water and sewer. So you're a businessman. You figure out what would you do? Would you decide you want to spend? A, you want to build here? 
and spend more money to build her. Don't get me wrong, some people are going to do that. I did it with my business. I built in Iberia Parish. But at the end of the day, everybody <coughs> don't think like that. So I'm just simply saying that when you're going to start getting these reports, even though we may have a priority list for roads, we can't repair them. We have no dedicated funds for them. So we need to think about that. Anyway, I don't want to get into that now. I don't think this is the time for that, but we'll do that when it comes time for budget. All right. <coughs> Any uh, further Morning. discussion? Morning. Mr. Trahan? Yes. Uh, as all these discussions are going on, uh, I'd like to en entertain an idea of uh, going through <coughs> millage reallocation and sales tax reallocation and see what it would need to bring this parish forward to where we'd have in infrastructure money set forward with a dedicated funding source. Uh, that's just an idea we have, and uh, I'd like to push it forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Trong. Any other discussion? Roll call. We were voting on summary number 4835. <coughs> that motion fails. Summary number 4836, introduced by Paul Landry, District 7, an ordinance setting forth and establishing a property millage for the public health unit, which is levied on all taxable property in the parish at the adjusted rate of 2.06 mills for 2017. Do you have a motion? Move. Moved by Mr. Tommy Landry. Second. Seconded by Mr. Paul Landry. Any discussion? Um. That one should be a 1.7. Mm -hmm. That's the adjusted rate. Any other discussion? As it relates to the uh, health unit, I know that there will be some funds that, that are going to be coming up that weren't foreseen before as it relates to uh, issues with transportation of patients and stuff. And so we just, I don't know if all you guys know about this, but we, uh, we will have some extra expenses transporting uh, mental health patients into uh, in and out of New Iberia. So, uh, and that, that, that increase would uh, would surely help in producing some revenue for that fund. I just like to say regarding the uh, public health unit budget, uh, if we approve the rate at 2.06 and we don't go up at all. Right now that budget is, uh, that fund balance is operating at a, about a $300,000 deficit. Uh, we do have about $3 million in that um, fund right now. Uh, but with this new expense that y'all all got, uh, that's an expansion of the agenda for later on tonight uh, with the transportation cost uh, involving uh, some committed patients with the hospital, uh, we're potentially facing about another $100,000 a year expense. Uh, so uh, I would uh, plead to my council members to uh, consider going up a slight amount. We're already operating in a $300,000 a year deficit, and so a $400,000 a year deficit is going to eat that fund balance up very rapidly. Mr. Trahan, you had something? Are we mandated to pay the PEC? I know we mandated to pay the auto protective custody. <laughs> I'm, I'm asking the question. If he's I'll, be, I'll be glad to discuss that with you tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. I'm just asking. Increase to adjusted rate. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So Mr. Brown? Uh, to answer Marsh's question, it's questionable. You know, that, but if we don't have the money to do it, we're gonna have to come back to do something. Well, well, I'm not. I'm not. Well, it's most it. likely. I'm not moving against it. I'm how just pushing that. How can that be the justice? Most likely, we're gonna have to. 
And, and that's oh, one, one other thing. I think the uh, Emir of High nurse that, that the state <coughs> that, that we have to pay. So the state is backing off from us from that. So we we got to be prepared to that's all. Well, I'm not all. against I'm not for it. Mr. Lane. I'd like to make a point. I, I've had uh, numerous discussions about this, and I'd like the public to realize that the state is dumping a lot of services that they provided onto parish entities, okay? Oh, the whole state. So it's not just our problem locally, but what's happening, programs which they traditionally covered and, and gave uh, parishes funds for are no longer going to be there. And so again we're going to have to do a lot more with a lot less and I think the people who have an issue with millages being raised uh, they need to go back to their local representatives not not in this facility but the ones that go to Baton Rouge and, and, and make all the cuts when when the, those services are being cut here and it it looks like we're the ones we're the perpetuators of those cuts but we can only do so much with uh, with so much money and those state funds are dwindling rapidly, and, and, and that's what's happening with a lot of these uh, programs, such as uh, transportation, you know, prisons. So, again, we're getting squeezed, and a lot of it has to do with what's going on in Baton Rouge. Mr. Are there any other just a, questions? No, just a brief comment. On, on this summary, on, I don't want to get into detail because we do have an expansion and discuss on the PECs, but you mentioned $100,000 increase to the fund balance, and, and potentially the overall cost could be 100000 but preliminary agreements and discussions are that the cost is going to be divvied up amidst two or three entities, but the final discussion has not re been rendered yet, but potentially that may not be up to $100,000 to the cost to us. Potentially. Uh, it could be. And it could I understand be. that, but if we don't ad adjust our millages no, now yeah. and we don't have that income coming in, right. then it has to come out of the general fund. Right. And we don't have it. No, ma'am. It won't come out the general fund. No, <laughs> Mr. Goshison? Andy, uh, may I refer to uh, legal counsel? Um, Brenda told me to get with you. Uh, the reason we're going up, if it, you can explain just for the public about the increase to adjusted rate is going from last year 1.55 to 2.06, but we're collecting the same amount of money. Is that correct? I don't know about the amount you're collecting, but if, if 2.06 is the adjusted maximum millage, you can go to the adjusted maximum millage without having to roll forward the taxes. Is that your question? Well, I mean, uh, maybe somebody can help me. Are we collecting more at 2.06 than 1.55? We will. Okay. Just, I just want to make sure for the record. I mean, you know, I, I was understanding that anything higher than the adjusted rate would have to take 10 votes, correct? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any more questions? Roll call. Right. That motion carries. <coughs> Next, we move on to summary number 4837, and introduced by Paul Landry, District 7, an ordinance setting forth and establishing a property millage for drainage facilities which is levied on all taxable property in the parish at the adjusted rate of 3.90 mills. Do I have a motion? Move. Move. Moved by Mr. Tommy Landry, seconded by Mr. Michael Landry. Nick Natalie. Any discussion? Um, the spreadsheet has 3.0. No, okay, I got you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The, the spreadsheet must be wrong. It's 3.08 on it, but. Yeah, it does. It does. It's, it's wrong. Yeah. I'm just yeah. looking at the spreadsheet versus the resolution. The spreadsheet's wrong. Yeah. If I'm, if I'm, if, well, am I correct with that statement? Yeah. Yeah, Tommy, that's what I thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In 2016, what we levied was 3.08. Mm -hmm. 
when we voted, we voted to go up to the yes, adjusted millages, right. which would bring That's us to mm. 3.9. Uh, okay, I'm following. What, what? You're not voting on the spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's different. You're all right. Now, Mr. Gosh. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to make a substitute motion to amend uh, the current number from 3.90 to last year's rate at 3.08. I'll second that motion. I have a. That's what happened with the one before. Mm -hmm. A motion to amend to go down to 3.01. 3.08, correct. And a second, any discussion? Roll call. That motion fails. So we're back to the original motion at uh, 3.9. This is a tax raise. Yeah. The last one was, this one is too. Not, not this one, they failed. No, but it's still on the original yeah, motion. That's good. All right, well, so we we're back to uh, 3.9 mils for the drainage. Any further discussion? I'd like to offer a substitute motion. Yes, sir. I'd like to amend 3.90. Uh, and go back to 3.07. <coughs> and that would be under what we collected last year. How much do we have in that fund, uh, madam? Four million. Over four million, is that correct? Four million. Okay. I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Mr. Gonsolin. Discussion, Mr. Landry. <coughs> so we're gonna go into drainage with a $4 million budget. We've already been told that a portion of the report we're gonna have is a two million. Two projects. A two million dollar project, and then that's not the other balances. Now you're the one that's walked out there with your little Delcom Rebox helping your people, and you're gonna to wanna to bring more money down, Warren? Let me tell you, this is quickly becoming a good day for St. Martin Parish, and that can be put in the paper. <laughs> On TV. Any further discussion? Uh, Natalie. Mr. Olivier? Yeah, this parish can't afford to, to go down on drainage. I mean, we got too many issues. I got people on my back all the time about drainage. We just don't have the resources to get them all done. I got someone here in the audience right now been after me to get drainage problems fixed. And I, I can't give them a straight answer on it because we don't have the personnel to do it right now. I mean, we, we need to fix this problem. I mean, people are flooding in this parish. We got to fix this, so we, and we take some money to do it. Thank you, Natalie. Mr. Gosherson. Uh, Mr. Eugene, I understand the problem that you're having drainage problems just like I am, and there's four million dollars there to do the work. If if Mr. Richard can tell you today that those two projects he's talking about are going to get done in 2017. I want to stand and help him because it's not going to happen. Just like tw uh, Lewis Street hadn't got, where two years the money's there, it still hasn't happened. We all learn government works slow. There's money that's coming into this account, just like you just raised 2.06. At the end of the day, you're going to keep raising, keep raising. It's not going to get us out of the bond that we're in. You know that as well as I know, Mr. Eugene. Paul knows that too. <clears throat> yeah, I was out there, Mr. Landry, because I care about my community. <laughs> well, then you should have like voted different. Yeah, I care about my community. So I was taking the time out of my my own time to go out and clean ditches and bring sandbags when they had $4 million. It's not about the money, Paul. It's the principle is there needs to be a plan. You're asking for more money with no plan. Warren. Just because he told you two projects doesn't mean at the end of the day it's going to get done, Paul. These smoke screens that you're seeing up here is smoke screens. Stop playing politics, and the people are sitting here. They, what about those people that are telling you that they're tired of paying more taxes? It's happening every year. They can't even pass a renewal in Lafayette. What about those people? 
I guess it's, they lost confidence overnight, right? So it's not just happening in Iberia Parish. But we can prove it to them, Warren. Well, let's, when, when we going to prove it, when we go into the budget process, we have 2018, 2019, 2020. Any other discussion? Okay, what are we voting on? I don't have a second. Oh, I have a second. Okay. So right now we're on the motion, the substitute motion to reduce drainage to 3.07. <coughs> Point one million. <coughs> Roll call. Oh, can, I, can I offer a substitute resolution? You can only have one substitute okay. on the floor one time. That motion fails. Madam Chairman, I thought to substitute motion to amend the resolution to 3.08, what we collected in 2016. That's already failed. You can't bring it back up. Okay. That's right. I'm sorry. Mr. Trahan, did you want to offer a substitute motion? Yes. Um, I'd like to offer a substitute motion to bring it back to 3.45. That mails. We have a substitute on the floor for 3.45. Do I have a second? We have a substitute <coughs> to bring it from the 3.08 that it was in 2016 to 3.45 rather than the 3.90 that is yeah. uh, on the agenda. Yeah. Do we have a second? Second. Yeah. Now, they can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Madam Chairman, I just, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the original resolution is stated at 3.9, and the current 2016 sheet collected in 2016 was 3.08, <laughs> am I correct? So that represents a roll forward, which is not stated in a resolution, and is required 10 votes. So that resolution is absolutely incorrect, am mm -hmm. I right? I mean, is it 3.08 is what you just collected, just or is it this a typo? That's a typo. It's a typo. No, we... In 2016. We, I'll refer to Brenda. I think she can okay. explain All better. Because we weren't sure if we needed to put the current millage that is levied on the agenda for them okay. to set the millage first. And she said, no, we needed to put the adjusted maximum millage rate on the agenda. And then if we, if we plan to roll forward, you, you have to do it twice. We have to specify it says at the adjusted rate. Okay, that's adjusted rate. You answered my question, the adjusted rate. The next one would be to roll it forward. Okay. The reason, the reason I, I, I would like it at that, that point is we got some drainage projects from Bruce Ord, <coughs> Youngsville, <coughs> St. Martin, that we got to get these canals done. You know, uh, unless we're going we're gonna to flood some people in Iberia Parish, y'all. Would you like to get flooded? I don't think so. Okay. I wish y'all would vote and pass this to where we can get some extra money in. To, to help curtail this cost, which that would bring in 231895 Y'all, we need drainage in this parish. So what, what's the figure you said that 3.45 would bring yes. in? Yes. 231895 mm -mm. Yeah. All right, so we have a motion. Was there a second to Mr. Tommy, Mr. Tommy Landry? Second, any further discussion on that? Roll call. I got you. an increase to 3.45 That motion carries. It's a
Summary number 4837, and introduced by Paul Landry, an ordinance setting forth and establishing the property millage for drainage for Sorry. Did you get what you got? Okay, we, we set 4837 at 3.90. Uh, no, we, four five. I mean 3.45 right. under summary number 4837. We're now at four, summary number 4838, mm -hmm. which is an ordinance setting forth and establishing the property millage for drainage facilities, which is levied on all ta taxable property in the parish at the adjusted rate of 3.9 mills and authorizing an increase in said vote to 4.0 mills to be levied for 2017. Do I have a motion? Move. A second. Moved by Mr. Tommy Landry, second by Mr. Eugene Olivier. Any discussion? One comment. <coughs> Mr. Olivier. This is actually where it needs to be for the administration to get their job, get the work done. That's the only thing I, I have to say on that pattern. Do we all agree? Right? It's 3.4. You're asking for 4.0. Do we make an amendment to 3.4? Paul. Mr. Sheely, I'm going to. Uh, defer to you on a question that I'm being asked by the, the clerk. Um, it's her understanding that since we did not go to the adjusted rate of 3.9 in summary number 4837 that we cannot roll forward in 4838. I don't know that to be the case but you already can tell what's going to happen. I, you know what? You need to make, you need to vote. Any it's further on, discussion? It's on the agenda. So I'm with you. Yeah. Any further discussion? Roll call. <laughs> that motion fails. Summary number 4839 introduced by Paul Landry, an ordinance setting forth and establishing a property millage for the public library system which is levied on all taxable property in the parish at the rate of 2.0 0 0.20 mills for 2017. I need a motion. Move. Second. Moved by Mr. Brown, second by Mr. Trahan. Any discussion? This is bringing it down. Right. Yes. I just want to make a comment. Mr. Duga. Yes, uh, this, uh, this summary is actually for the thinking um, library fund, which it's not specific in here, so it's that's the, for the bond payment. Right. All right. Thank you. Any uh, further discussion? Roll call. Hope. That motion carries. <laughs> Before we go too far, I, I, I'd just like to point out to uh, the council's attention, I, I don't want to leave this meeting without uh, everybody understanding what, what just took place. Um, we had voted originally to go up to the maximum of adjusted uh, millages at our committee meeting, and that's what numbers were on our agenda. Um, when we voted um, just now, we, um, I think, went above what we anticipated going because we went to some of those adjusted maximum millages and uh, we were anticipating uh, bringing our millages up to around 26.8 and these votes resulted in bringing the millages up to around 27.57. And I think on two funds in particular, uh, there was some confusion on public buildings. We um, anticipated bringing the millages up to 4.10, and we brought it up all the way to 4.64. Which one was that? Public buildings. And on the health unit, we anticipated originally bringing it up to uh, 1.70 and I think uh, with the discussion of if we needed more money 
for the unanticipated cost that came up this week, we would need to bring it up to about 1.8 to cover that. And we brought it all the way up to 2.06. And I'm just trying to make sure that everybody understands what we did in case there's somebody who uh, wants to do some sort of reconsideration uh, before we adjourn tonight. Um, if anybody needs a break for us to discuss that, I think this is very important for the taxpayers for us to get this right. And I do not mind calling a recess if I hear no objections from anybody from the council so that we can crunch these numbers and make sure we're getting it straight. I object. Let's move on. Okay. Mr. Gosh. Yeah, there? Madam Chair, I would reconsider, but I was on the losing end of raising taxes, right. so I'll reserve myself. I'd like, to I'd like to reconsider summary 4836 and summary, eight four, summary 4837. All right. Uh, 47, you want to do public uh, drainage and not public buildings? Uh, what, which one is public buildings? Public buildings is the one that we went uh, all the way up to 4.64, and that is summary 4834. Yes, I do want to reconsider, reconsider that one. All right, so are you trying to reconsider all three of them or just the two that I had originally suggested? Yes, ma'am, no, all three of those. All right, so you want to do them one at a time? I believe we have to do them one at a time. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a motion to reconsider summary number 4834. Do I have a second? Yes. Motion fails by lack of a second. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I second. Okay. Can he second after no. the motion fails? No. Come on, I gotta bring it back up again. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, did you vote in favor of it? You had already said that it fell for lack of a second. Uh, now, I'm not sure what side Mr. Dugard was on anyway, and whether he, oh, he in that particular so. one, he could ask to reconsider. Madam Clerk, can we look? I think he was on the losing side of that. At 4834 and see if Mr. Duga was on the prevailing side. Well, then take a vote. If you object, you take a vote to the recess. All right, I have a motion on the floor by Mr. Goshison to take a recess. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Right. Thank you. Let's vote on the recess since we have an objection. Man. Motion to recess fails. <laughs> you, you know you I, was, I, I was reading this as uh, eight votes with no change. But you tell me that eight votes, even though it was eight votes, it was the maximum roll up. It was the maximum adjusted yeah. increase. All right, so uh, Mr. Duga was on the prevailing side for uh, 4834, as was Mr. Goshison. So I have a motion and a second to reconsider summary number 4834. Uh, any discussion on the reconsideration? So, on, All right. on summary 4834, it's an adjusted rate of 4.6 mil, which is the uh, 4.6. We have to both first vote on whether or not there's a reconsideration. <coughs> okay. This one right here? No, I voted no to that. Of course you do. All right, so we're voting on the reconsideration of uh, summary number 4834. Roll call. Motion fails. Madam Chairman, for the record, the clerk's re reflecting that I voted for 40, 4834, 
I'd like the record to reflect I voted against 4834. Mm -hmm. So amend the record to reflect that I voted against 4834 raise in the public building and maintenance. All right, so Mr. Duga, uh, we need to see if you were on the you were on the prevailing side. I think for 4836 because yeah. I think that was unanimous as well. Correct? No, we voted against that one. 4836. All right, you were on the prevailing side of 4836, Mr. Duga. So are you making a motion to reconsider 4836? Oh, everybody. Oh, uh, no, that one's good. You're okay leaving the health at 2.06? That's correct. All right. Yeah, I've got and on summary number 4837. <laughs> Uh, the clerk doesn't have a record on whether or not you were on the uh, prevailing side. Did I don't have a record that I voted. <laughs> she has to go back to the tape because they were changing their vote. So. Wait. <laughs> You were not on the prevailing side. You were, okay. she didn't have the vote on the substitute motions. All right, so before we leave millages, are there any other motions? Summary number 4840, introduced by legal counsel, an ordinance amending chapter two of the compiled ordinances to authorize the inclusion of resolutions, authorizing change orders, and granting substantial completion to projects as items that may bypass the committee process and be included on the council agenda as consent items. Do I have a motion? Move. Moved by Mr. Brown. Second. Second by Mr. Olivier. Any discussion? Roll call. Motion carries. Resolution introduced for public hearing and adoption summary number 88 by the parish president a resolution granting substantial completion to the John <coughs> Lewis Road Bridge over Weeks Canal all is completed by Great Construction Corporation and as recommended by project engineers sellers and associates do I have a motion move move by Mr. Traha second. <coughs> second by Mr. Landry any discussion all good roll call <coughs> Motion carries. Summary number 89, introduced by Natalie Brusor, District 6, a resolution amending resolution number 2012-217, which required the administration to provide a written status report of all grant projects to the council at a council meeting to provide that said reports will be provided to the council members in their correspondence report section of the packets instead of at the council meeting. Do I have a motion? Ooh. Moved by second. Mr. Brown, second by Mr. Traha. Any discussion? Roll call. Motion carries. Resolution 90, introduced by Natalie Brusor, District 6, a resolution amending resolution 2013-49, which required representatives of all engineering firms to report to the council monthly on the status of current projects to provide that the reports will provi be provided to the council members in their correspondence report section of the packets instead of at the council meeting. Move. I have a motion by second. Mr. Brown, a second by Mr. Paul Landry. Any discussion? Roll call. No. That motion carries. Summary number 91, introduced by the Recreation and Playground District, a resolution amending the 2017 Iberia Parish Recreation and Playground District fund budget and the amount of $40,000 needed for repairs to the gym floor at the King Joseph Recreation Building, all to be funded from the fund balance previous year line item. Move. Moved by Mr. Second. Olivier, second by Mr. Francis. Any discussion? Roll call.
Motion carries. Summary number 92, introduced by Natalie Broussard, District 6, a resolution <coughs> repealing resolution numbers 2016-103, 2016-146, and 2016-254 of the Iberia Parish Council, all or which are related to the issuance of a temporary moratorium on the development, establishment, and or construction of mobile home parks or mobile home subdivisions in the unincorporated areas of Iberia Parish, Louisiana, and otherwise to respect, to provide with respect there too, do I have a motion? Move. Move by Mr. Olivier, second, second by Mr. Traha. Any discussion? Roll call. <coughs> that motion carries. Summary number 93, introduced by the parish president, a re resolution authorizing change order number one for the north side road drainage improvements project in the amount of 27768 to provide additional funding for an additional catch basin, widening of the road shoulder on the south side, and quantity adjustments needed to reflect actual quantities all to be funded from the remaining bond proceeds for bridge replacement repairs and further amending the 2017 royalty fund budget fund balance previous year's line item for said change order. Do I have a motion? Move. Move Second. by Mr. Second. Olivier. Second by Mr. Gonsalan. Discussion, Mr. Traha. Ricky, where's that <coughs> catch basin going? Say that again. Where's that catch basin going? Oh, on the, on the, on the, north the parking side. lot? On the unique no, side. The north side, the, the mill side. Oh, no. Yeah, the mill side. The, jo the job is... Just the we just got to add the catch basin on the north side. On the north side would be the mill side. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Not right. the bayou test side. Not the bayou test side. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, I'd like to amend the same the north side. That's fine. I'll second it. Okay. Good. Kim, you had something? I did. Um, we actually have enough money this particular project budget, so we don't need an adjustment to the royalty fund budget. It's just to authorize the change order. So is that okay with the motion <laughs> and the second to that's okay. That's okay. not add it, just to do the adjustment? Yes. Any yeah. other discussion? Roll call. That motion carries. Go to the expansion agenda. Yeah, that was good. Discuss and consider a motion to expand the agenda to discuss and considering the following item. Summary number 94, introduced by the parish president. A resolution amending resolution 2017-81 adopted May 10, 2017, which authorized the installation of flagpoles with flags from each branch of the military and to erect a plaque in support of the United States military in front of the main courthouse building in order to provide that said plaque will be in honor of all past, present, and future United States military. The purpose of this expansion is to install the flagpoles with the flags and plaques as soon as possible without uh, further delay. I uh, need a motion to go into public hearing regarding the expansion. Move. Move, Move by Mr. Tronghall, <coughs> second by Mr. Michael Landry. Roll call. Motion carries. Are there any comments from anyone in the public or regarding this agenda item? Move to go back in regular session. Second. Motion by Mr. Olivier, second by Mr. Trahan to go back into regular session. Roll call. Motion carries. Need a motion to expand the agenda. I move. Move by Mr. Second. Olivier, second by Mr. Trahan. Roll call. That motion carries. Uh, just to, to explain, we're not going to put the individual names of anybody on the plaque. It will just be the drawing that you were all provided with that says Iberia Parish supports their military past, present, and future without listing any individual names on the plaque. Uh, is there any further discussion? Roll call.
Motion carries. Discuss and consider a motion to expand the agenda to discuss and consider the following item. Summary number 95, introduced by the parish president, a resolution endorsing and supporting the Bayou Tesh National Paddle Trails, Trailheads grant application, Generate City Park, and otherwise to provide with respect thereto. The purpo purpose of this expansion is to authorize the installation and necessary agreements in order that this project may be completed in a timely manner. Need a motion to go into public hearing? Move. Moved by Mr. Second. Francis, second by Mr. Gosselin. Any discussion? Roll call. Any comments from the public? That motion passed. Any comments from the public on this agenda item? Hearing none. I move to go back in regular session. Second. Motion by Mr. Olivier, second by Mr. Gonsalan to go into regular session. Roll call. Mr. Landry's. Call. Motion carries. I need a motion to expand the agenda. Move. Move by Mr. Traha. Second by Mr. Gosselin. Me. Mr. Gosselin. Roll call. That motion carries. Does anybody need me to read the summary again? No, ma'am. Right, no. Any discussion <laughs> on the actual summary or the resolution? Roll call. <coughs> motion carries. Wait, was we missing a vote? Tommy. Tommy. Motion carries. <coughs> discuss and consider a motion to expand the agenda to discuss and consider the following items. Summary number 96, introduced by Ricky Gosselin, District 8. Resolution amending the 2017 Iberia Parish Health Unit Fund budget in amount up, up to 12500 to provide one-third of the cost for transportation in connection with physician emergency certificates. PECs for Iberia Parish residents patients for a 90 day period effective May 23rd, 2017 with matching one third funding to be provided by Iberia Medical Center and the Iberia Parish Sheriff's Office respectively and all to be funded from the fund balance previous years. The purpose of this expansion is appropriate funding in order that PECs may continue to be issued for residents patients without interruption of services. Need a motion to go into public hearing? Move. Move by Mr. Gosselin, second. second by Mr. Traha. Roll call. Motion carries. Anybody in the public care to discuss this agenda item? Hearing none, I need a motion to go back into regular session. I move. Move by Mr. Olivier, second by Mr. Gosselin. Roll call. Motion carries. Need a motion to expand the agenda? Move. Second. Moved by Mr. Michael Landry, second by Mr. Ricky Gonsalin. Roll call. That motion carries. Comment uh, before adjournment. Hmm? Comment before adjournment. And uh, any discussion on the actual resolution? Yes. Mr. Gonsalin? Yeah, the funding source would have to be public uh, health and one. Yeah, it says that. Okay, yes, right. So, Mo, just uh, briefly, um, we uh, met this week, myself, Mr. Seeley, parish president, sheriff, and the hospital uh, just had an issue that came up with the sheriff that had some financial obligation that he needed to change with this service. So, uh, we thought that the appropriate way to handle it would give us 90 days. And Mr. Seeley said we would work on a solution within 90 days and, and come up with the, with the answer. But uh, it looks like. Uh, there's no way out of this situation. We'll all have to come up and uh, put forth an effort to make this work for the public. So I think it was the right move to protect our public safety interests. Any other discussion? Roll call. That motion carries. Mr. Landry? You know, I spent a lot of time away from my wife and my family. We uh, started the millages when we went to Larry and asked him for some recommendations. We did not take all of Larry's recommendations. We sat down with Kimberly. She gave us all these numbers. 
we met a number of times, always five or six of us, listening to everybody's decision, what they thought to do what's right for the people of Iberia Parish. And we come here tonight and not everybody is on the same agenda. I was hoping to get a $369,000 increase, which I considered very minor. We're leaving here tonight with a $788,000 increase. That's an increase off of what I considered fair of about 418,000. Now, I want the people in my district to know that that was not brought on by me. <laughs> I did not wear boots. I came over here and we, we worked it all out with everybody's agreement. And at the last minute, a sabotage was decided and they're the ones that put it to the public. Yes, sir. Comment, Mr. Goshen. Personal privilege. I'm not sure about the sabotage, but they knew what the millages were. You knew what you were coming in for. This was the raise. You said you needed a little more. Now everybody pays. Don't don't back out now. <laughs> the raises are there. You ask for them. Go do what you told these people you're going to do with them. We, we have so, it all on the paper, Warren. All right. All right. Motion. Yes, Mr. Olivia. Paul, I just want to comment. You did a good job as a finance chair on these millages. I think your formula was perfect for the parish. You and I don't always see eye to eye on right taxes sometimes, but one. this is one time we agreed together on it, and I think you had a good formula. Unfortunately, it didn't quite work out that way, but uh, we need to move on, and uh, let's get things done in this parish. Thank you. Great. Motion to adjourn by anybody? Move. Moved by Mr. Goshasan. Second by Mr. Pollard. Good meeting with you, Natalie. Thank you, sir.